How's it going, viewers? Mr. Incredible Ronnie's Bag and he's Roll the Punches, baby. The only channel where the YouTuber is a CD of all objects. Yeah. There's no difference, alright? There's no difference. See? But, either way, we are finally going to be checking out the second video and possibly the final video that Sleepy Blue, Sleepy Blue Mug does on one by Cheesy A2J. Possibly my favourite object show I got into on this channel. I loved every episode of it and it was so much fun and it got deeper and deeper and darker than I expected. The lore was just insane and I loved his analysis video called The Horror of Object Show and now that the final episodes have been released and I've reacted to all of them, CP Blumark has finally talked about them and I'm ready to see his thoughts. So let's do this. One, two, three, react. Almost a month ago, I made a video on Morbus Disguise as an object show and it slowly unraveled into something more interesting. Me of life. Analyzing the final episodes that released after my video on the topic. If you believe I will cover any mistakes I did in my last video on HFJ1, I probably won't. But after the making of the video, I had realized I have missed out on a very important feature. The actual site that Taxi shows. Oh. So how this segment will go is that I will basically list all the non-canon pages where they don't show up in the videos. And mm -hmm. I'll read from there. In season 1, Button, Caney, Scarfy. Season 2, Batch 1, Charlie. Season 2, Batch 2, Trey and Ruby Creamy. Season 2, Batch 3, the whole lot is considered non-canon, but it's still cool to have the option. And the new season would have had Owen, the nail dude. Season 1 contestant, Oscar Mayworth, is a homeless man back M112, living in New York in homeless shelters. Another Season 1 contestant, Julian Baymont, was an independent filmmaker who had lived in Limoges, France. Another Season 1 contestant, Max Schwartz, worked as a system analyst who had autophobia, which is a fear of loneliness, living in Pomeroy, Ohio. Keep this information in mind. Now let's move into the Season 2 contestants and their canon information. In Group 1, we have Liam Fakak as a telemarketer in San Francisco. Taylor Nolan Brooks as a teenage retail cashier who has separated parents and who lives in Toledo, Ohio. Mm. Remember Max Schwartz? Max's house is only four hours from Taylor's and that information is the information that Taylor has to separate parents. And judging from the fact that one season one must have happened nearly a decade before season two was made, oh. Max shouldn't be old enough to be a work partner of Taylor or he is an adult and Taylor is a teen. So this makes me think that Max could be, could be, a potential parent for Taylor, who had separated with Taylor's current parent. This Aww. idea of Max I already liked the magazine. ...for who knows how long, and the appearing to only act weird or insane in front of his wife and daughter. That could have caused him and his wife to split up. Charlotte Stern worked as a freight handler and lives in Brunswick, Georgia, and had served three months in jail time, alluding to some suspicious past. Living in Yakima, Washington and working as a yoga instructor, Amelia Euler was living her life before being put into one. Bryce Hansen, living in Bridgeport, Connecticut and occupied as a fast food worker, he has glassophobia, which is a fear of large bodies of water, which explains how terrified he looked back at the tub of water where Liam had drowned. After Liam's elimination, Basie was eliminated from one, placing an 11th place. And that's practically the end of most important stuff in Season 2, Batch 2. And there's nothing for Season 2, Batch 3, because Batch 3 is purely non-canon in this site. And mm. without further to do, let's start from where we left off. After Liam, Bryce, and Texty leave Stone's dimension, Liam is losing hope on ever finding out about one. While Bryce is becoming more interested when he explains his interests and that they only have three more notes to solve, Bryce stops on his tracks and says that he's not in his suburbs anymore. Most likely seeing what Liam sees ever since his interest has peaked about one. Putting the radio code of a piece of paper that is labeled SF, they realize that it is San Francisco and they want to get back to Earth to buy Taxi a charger. While in the store for Taxi's charger, Liam meets his old friend Owen from episode one. After covering up- That moment was so wholesome. Bryce and Liam go to charge Taxi where Bryce tells Liam that he isn't ditching him this time. While in the alleyway that Liam was found where he found Bryce's address amongst his notes, when preparing to go back to the limbo again as Texie counts down to send them, Bryce disappears before Texie's countdown, and we already know who else can teleport people. This episode is found beginning in the plane where Amelia sits in the wooden home. Trey and airline food are put up against each other in the boating 
and we already know that Basie had been eliminated after Liam's elimination, that's why she is not there. After airline food's elimination, Whippy Creamy is then forced to check on Charlotte and her condition. Subway Seats follows Whippy Creamy to help him check on her. We then figure out where everybody is after their elimination. Contact Lens is on the floor, Circle is back in battle for Circle, and Foldy- Oh, oh Foldy, you poor soulless creature. Subway Seat and Whippy Creamy Best. believe that Charlotte had died. When further inspection with Amelia, it is thought that Charlotte had disappeared. But the word of Subway Seat and Whippy Creamy was somewhat non-reliable, for they've only seen dead humans. But let's suspend our disbelief and believe Subway Seed and Whippy Creamy. What if Charlotte was there? Even though the mold was already eating away at her body and she was still breathing, the second her body gave out and perishes, she was placed inside the purgatory while Liam and Bryce were still on Earth. When asking about her whereabouts to Aerie, she is confused as she is somewhere that she is not meant to be. This may be the limbo place Liam and Bryce were previously seen going through universes. When bringing Charlotte back, she is seen with her hand out and looking as if she is walking towards something. Like in Universe Modulation slash Episode 14, people found in the limbo see somebody who are important to them, making them follow them to what I believe is the proper afterlife. Perhaps in death, Charlotte saw somebody important to them in an important slash personal space. Like how Bryce saw his childhood suburb. Aerie notes the fact that whatever happened to her sent her back to the original form she was in the beginning of the competition mm. before the mold spread a lot. This information we are currently unsure of, and Aerie doesn't really know either. Charlotte opens up to everybody who was still in the competition, saying that she was in it for her mold treatment and is now unsure. Whatever Charlotte saw before being brought back to one got her to think about stuff and realizing that she may not use the money correctly, as seen in episode 5, Rhetorical Molds. Charlotte begins to question why in the beginning of the competition, Bryce, Liam, and Amelia were so adamant on leaving one, and how the time had passed, they had effectively settled into the plane, mostly pointing it out to Amelia, who suspiciously tries to laugh it off. Tearing up, Amelia stutters to answer the questions like leaving one and going back to her life, as if leaving one became less appealing to her, maybe alluding to something bad back at her life, or maybe she just genuinely got Stockholm Syndrome. If not for Ari, it's towards the plane. Ari announces a rejoin as soon as Amelia is trying to get some space with tears in her eyes. We already know who this rejoiner is. Oof. The climax there Only for me shocked seconds, me. Bryce had illustrated eyes, but as fast as he joined back into the game, his eyes disappeared. In my past video, I believed that the eyes meant some sort of truth. This is evident after Stone had explained to Liam and Bryce that the votes are a lie, effectively opening their eyes, and afterwards they are illustrated with eyes. Mm-hmm. This episode begins with Liam and Taxi scrambling and wondering where Bryce had ended up. This place is still putting people in it, as a person can be seen running away presumably to their loved ones. Aerie inputs the code that is labeled Aerie, which sends them somewhere in a dark forest in the night. As they hear footsteps closing in on them, Liam and Taxi escape, as we see, which was presumably Aerie. When back at the limbo, Liam and Taxi find Julian, probably back after trying to get back to Earth using the radio. Liam gives the broken man the notes for San Francisco, knowing that he'll be back at Earth. Julian says his thanks, even though he says it in French. Hmm. Hey, are you trying to get back to Earth? This stands for San Francisco. Do you know where San Francisco is? This number will take you back to Earth. Say, V. Now lift it up. Liam enters the code for area again and is back at the forest, except it's day. Liam exits the forest into a large space seeing a waterfall campfire place, a well-placed vine wall, and a small cabin. Entering the vine wall, he finds area. Liam confronts area on setting everybody back, but he declines, saying that there are only six more eliminations left. When Liam tries to do it, he can't for how complex the system is. 
Liam then confronts Aerie again on why he does one. It appears that Aerie doesn't realize his wrongdoings as he says that he did it for fun. Aerie even discloses that the votes were in and there were no viewers the entire time, so Stone was correct. While Liam and Aerie are collecting reeds, Aerie is enticed on the tape player that Liam has in pieces for some reason. Liam bargains with Aerie for the contestants to be sent back to their lives for Aerie's tape player. Aerie complies and he says that he'll send the contestants back tomorrow. While on their way back, Liam slips and drops his items off the waterfall, including Texie's charger, Stone's notes, which all items break apart. In the night, Aerie explains to Liam how he had ended up in the wooden place, telling Liam that he had originated from Earth slash their universe. After searching through the radio in the limbo, Aerie had ended up within the wooded place, which he decided to start living there. Aerie discloses that he had been in the wooded place for at least a decade. Liam then questions Aerie about the first one competition. After plugging the computer into the planets, Aerie realizes that it can bring other people from other dimensions, bringing batches of people into the plane from his dimension. Aerie panicked and told them that it was for a competition. After Oscar was eliminated, it's pretty insane how the system works for Aerie. Crushed the entire planet by crushing it with said rocks, killing everybody except Oscar, who had been eliminated from one. Aerie's incompetence was reflected off by Oscar's words about back when Liam and Bryce questioned him on the one. Aerie did not know how to revive the contestants at that time, and ever since then, Aerie had been working his way to season two, and he believes that he is doing a pretty alright job, oblivious mm. to the pain and anguish he would cause. While in the shack, Texi wants Liam to murder Aerie, but he is unsure for Aerie is the only person who can bring the contestants back to their lives. Before anything else can happen, Texi needs to charge and Liam is remorseful for not saving Texi's charger back when he dropped it off the waterfall. Toward the end of the episode, we figure out how Aerie places objects into the plane without crushing the contestants like he did in one season one. Aerie uses a secondary planet that makes every object on said planet to shrink. Harry then places the said object onto the plane where it looks massive. This shows Harry more confident and prepared to be a host. Even though it's not malicious, he's causing more harm than good, but Harry seems like he's genuinely enjoying watching the contestants compete, like he's playing some sandbox game where the ragdolls are sentient and had lives. Huh. Harry is broken, not just physically, but mentally. For a decade, he spent alone listening to the tape player in the wooded place, and probably spent more time trying to get to it using the radio after his death, which is still unknown to the viewer. After all that time, a person can just lose their sense of morality or mind, like with Julian Baymont, who was broken by Aerie after his death in season one. Aerie doesn't know he's hurting people, seeming to shrug it off as if his loneliness and disconnect from other sentient life had led him into a dark path, where he hurts others without knowing the full extent of it. Like with Julian, who had been broken completely, or Liam, who had his entire life torn away from him because of Aerie's little competition. Aerie may not be the villain we originally thought he was. For now, he seems like another victim in a soul-shattering limbo after death. But how did Aerie find his way to the wooded place? Did he see the same thing Liam saw when he died? Mm. And if so, why? Why? Oh no. This episode... This episode begins with the remaining contestants this, one People have a love-hate relationship with this episode. I think it's good, but not amazing. While Aerie is out collecting wood, Liam enters the cave to find the remaining contestants and that Aerie is planning for a third season. The third season contestants include Charlie's mother, Alice Howard, a Mela named Garrett who lives in Yakima who lives nearby Amelia who might be a partner or a yoga friend, Parker who is Charlotte's friend, Charis who most likely is Taylor's friend judging by the image, Kylie who works in the same fast food joint as Bryce, and Liam's college friend, Owen. That was that moment took me out of took me out of caught me off guard. Liam then argues with Aerie on who is the people on the computer, where Aerie responds with picking people for season three who is close to the season two contestants. For the season two contestants were really good contestants in Aerie's words. Mm. After listening to Aerie's insane ramblings, Liam was sick of it and decided to attack. While attacking Aerie, Liam gets his leg crushed after missing Aerie and chopping down a tree on accident effectively crushing his leg. 
again, causing Aerie to help him even though Liam had attacked him. After patching up Liam and fixing his tape player, Aerie goes back to collect some more items up at the top of the waterfall. Since the weather was terrible, Aerie was sent down the waterfall, being impaled through the face and effectively shattered. After waking up, Liam finds the tape player and listens to it, as he finds the remains of Aerie. We then figure out how Aerie had died in Earth. He was looking quite depressed while driving a vehicle right before crashing it. He ends up where Liam, Bryce, and Texie were seen sifting through universes. This leads me to believe that Aerie probably lived an unfulfilling life, therefore there was nobody that could entice him to the proper afterlife. Nor did he see a special slash personal place when he died. This might also explain why Aerie is so happy or oblivious with killing babies, mistakes, and drowning people. His emotional disconnect might correlate to his unfulfilled life and or maybe the time he spent alone after death. We then see how Aerie had constructed his home and the creation of the first season of One. We then see Liam losing Texty as it deactivates. Liam then goes to the computer and begins to start working on it, most likely trying to save everyone in the plane. Aerie is then seen back at the purgatory, except there is still nobody that will lure him to the afterlife. He now sees the plane and its construction, for that was what he spent nearly a decade building up to, having a connected bond to the plane. A considerable amount of time had passed while using Aerie's computer, as it is now night for Liam, as he stands in his lonesomeness. Since Cheesy HFJ finished one, the events after this episode is only up to the viewer's interpretation. For me, this ending feels somewhat unfulfilling, but the entire series feels great on its own other than this episode for me. Even though the ending was very nice to look at and to listen to, Cheesy had left many loose ends, like what's up with Stone and all of its knowledge? What did Charlotte see to like change her mind about things? Yeah. What's up with Amelia and her backstory, and what's the meaning of the limbo in, in the radio? I know I will 100% be missing some information. What happened to the contestants? Did they get back home or not? Story of one to patch any loose ends. Since Cheesy is going into college, and he'll be prioritizing his own life rather than some internet animated series on YouTube, then he has all of my respect for that. I believe that Aerie's death was too soon. He was only seen for like two episodes, including the ending. And that's if you don't count the time that Abstractly tried to replicate him. But either way, Eri was not the villain. Eri was just a mentally disconnected person after a decade of loneliness after death. These final videos are just as enjoyable as the rest of the series, showing how terrifying an object show scenario is for normal people who have lives. What I believe will happen is that Liam will start spending enough time to learn the basics to not only announce that he is the one controlling to the remaining people in the plane, but to learn how to teleport those people out of the plane, because that's what he can really do now. While Liam is in the wooded place, Aerie is subjected to the limbo forever if Aerie doesn't find another place to stay, if not back to Liam. If one thing can be said about Cheesy HFJ's one, is that it's really, really good and you should go watch it, and if you don't, I will. Oh. <laughs> really? This exact scenario was the exact same as this one show you were making a video on. Yeah. That's why this is really freaking me out, and I don't really want the remaining three contestants. <gasps> I'm gonna do the elimination now. What? It's only been less than an hour. Enough talking. It's about Wait, time today. Wait, how we meant to contact begins. you when we go back? In five, four, three. Wait, Ari, stop! One. We need to. My gosh. I'm so sorry, Sleepy Blue Mug. Thank you, Cheesy HFJ. Oh, oh, explosion. Oh, oh my. Another amazing video by you, Sleepy Blue Mug. I really liked it. Ugh. Yeah, definitely probably the most phenomenal object show I ever got into. Love it so much. Anyway. I will see you all later for one more video today. It's going to be the other free suit show I was going to react to. But anyway, if you enjoyed this particular video, leave a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested. Follow me on Instagram, link down below. And until then, stay positive, keep calm, stay safe, be incredible. And as always, Brony on. Peace.